Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. Today I'm just going to do some animation tests on this character. I'll be doing a walk animation and a quick idle animation. And in the next video, I'll just bring them into Unity and add a quick character controller to them. When I'm animating, I tend to animate in the timeline in the dope sheet a little bit more, and I might flip to the graph editor right at the end just to finesse some things um, for this animation. I'll just make my timeline from 0 to 20 here. I'll just zoom in on that. And I'll zoom in on it on the dope sheet as well too. First thing I'll do is I'll just select everything on the rig and I'll just hit I and I'll do location rotation scale to add that key to everything. Now this I hotkey when you're animating um, does bring up this menu, but you can automate this under the keying option. You can set an active keying set. I'm going to set mine to location rotation scale. And now when I hit I, it's just going to automatically key those values. So if I hit N to bring this up, I can see that. All right, I'm just going to pull these down a little bit. I'll just make a little bit more room in my viewport. The other thing I like to do when I animate is to actually add a camera. So let's add a camera really quickly. I'll just go to my camera view and I'm just going to pull this out and just get a nice shot of the character as I work. So I might put this over here. And in this view, I'll usually turn off the overlays just so I can see the character just without any of my rig right there. And I'll start animating. So first thing I'll do is the step forward. So I'll usually go to profile view for this and just drag the foot forward. Maybe even curl up the toe there. I'm just going to drop the hips down too. That root control added just to bring it right near the ground. Um, that is one other thing I'll quickly add is just the plane to act as a ground plane here. One thing that really helps too is there's this option here under the viewport shading and it's the shadow. And once you have a sort of viewport shadow as you work, I find that really helpful for figuring out ground contact as I work. Okay, so I have that foot forward. I'll just probably bend the knee a little bit more and bring down the hips a little bit. I'll just keep working with this pose until I get something that I like. Again, I'm always looking over to this window here just to see if I'm liking that. I'll probably curl the toe up a little bit. Okay, let's grab this other foot control here and we'll grab back. So this one, I want to do the opposite of that main foot. I want to rotate it down, drag it up, and just rotate the toe a little bit. Just getting that first pose. And I'll probably keep the toe just on the ground. Okay, that's looking good right there. It's not a bad first pose. Now this piece here is messed up. I'm going to come back at the end and fix that. I'm not going to fix that right now because I might change this pose a lot as I go. Um, I bet you this one is here too. Hopefully with my automation, I just have to counter that once for the entire shot. Okay, so I'll probably keep playing with these legs. That's looking nice. And I'll do slight animations on the arms. I'm not going to do too much on the arms because I want them to stay fairly stiff as he's walking. I don't want it to be like a huge arm swing like that. But I'll probably just bring it back a little bit. I'll just give it a little bit of a bend in the elbow. Just to give it a little bit of... Um, feeling there. So I'm grabbing this FK main shoulder joint in here just to animate that a little bit. And it's doing the opposite of this leg. So as this leg comes forward, this arm is going to come back. Again, these are going to be fairly slight animation moves as well too. So I'll grab onto this shield and I'll just push it forward a little bit. I'm going to deal with the hands real quick now too. And I'm probably just going to leave them as one pose for the entire um, shot. So this is going to curl around the shield right here. I'll just grab these four finger controls and I'll just rotate them up on their local axes. And I do have four finger controls in here that I'm going to rotate as well, just a little bit, just to clasp onto that shield. I'm hitting RY so that they're all rotating on their same axes. I think that's looking fine for that. And I'll just do the same for these four over here. I'll just do R and then I hit Y to rotate them on their local axes. So I'm constantly switching my view, constantly trying to see it from a new angle, um, just as I rotate these fingers up there. Sometimes you can just rotate them to collide and then just pull back if you're looking for that area. Okay, that's looking nice for my first pose. I may just pull this leg back a little bit. 
yeah, that's looking good. Okay, let's do the second pose, and that's with the legs in the center where I sort of get the maximum height of that character. Now, before you do anything else, I'm just going to select everything and just hit I again to key it again. That entire time I was animating, I actually had left auto key off, so it wasn't keying. So make sure you have auto key on as you work, just to make sure you're actually adding frames, if you like to work that way. Some animators love to work with auto key, other animators love to just work with uh, just keying things with the I hotkey or the S hotkey from Maya as they go. Okay, so I flipped to frame five here, and I'm just going to grab this foot and just bring it to the middle. Actually, I'll probably just go to the transform and just zero it out. I'll zero out the rotation as well, too. And I'll do the same for the toe. Okay, that's looking good there. And I'm going to grab the hip control and just lift it up just until the foot comes off the ground a little bit. I'll grab the other foot here and I'll just rotate it forward just to get that foot coming through. What I might do is just pull this out a little bit just to give it a bit of an interesting curve, an interesting pose there. Okay, the arm controls, they're going to come back sort of to a neutral position. Just a slight position here. And I might just bend that elbow a little bit. This one too, I'll probably just bring that back a little bit. So now I have these two poses. It's looking good like that. I might be able to finish the entire animation with just these two poses. So on frame five again, I'm gonna select everything, just hit I just to make sure I've keyed it. I'll go back to frame zero. I'll select everything and just do control C. That's going to copy the pose. And then when I go to frame 10, I can do control shift V and that's going to do something called paste invert. So it's actually copying the pose and pasting the inverse. I'll go to frame five. I'll do the same thing. I'll select everything. I'll do control C and I'll go to frame 15. I'll do control shift V to paste the inverse. Now for frame 20, I actually want it to match frame zero. So let's go to frame zero. I'll select everything and do control C and at frame 20, I'll do control V. So now I have a very quick walk animation test. Now I could finesse this for a couple more hours and make this look a lot nicer, but this is just a quick test to get it into the game engine, just to show you the whole process um, of this rigging technique. I do want to fix one thing though. Uh, I do want to fix this piece right here. So I'll probably just grab it forward here at frame zero and I'll go to frame five and I'll just key it out a little bit. My automation might actually be working a little bit against me in this case. Um, there are times where you just want to flip the automation off. I could have added a dial for that as well, too. I'll go to frame five and I'll just counter that out, too. Yep, that's looking nicer. Now, I don't have to really redo that again. I can just, again, select frame zero, do control C. At frame 10, do shift control V. And at frame 20, just do control V again. I can do the same thing for frame five. I can select everything, do control C, and frame 15, shift control V. Good. So that's looking a little bit jumpy still. I'm not 100% happy with it, but I want to move on to the next animation just so that I'm doing a couple here. So this is my walk animation. So I'm going to flip it to action editor, and I'm going to rename this to night walk. Now, Blender is interesting the way it deals with animation actions. So this is an action on this character, and it has one user, that user being my night character. So night walk right now um, is one animation I want, and I'm also going to add night idle. And they're both going to live in this file, but as soon as I remove night walk from this rig, it's not going to have any users and it's going to become orphan data. So I'm gonna to flip to my orphan data tab here. And you notice I just have a bunch of brushes in here. As soon as I click on this little X right here, that action is going to appear in my orphan data as night walk. If I were to close Blender and reopen it, I would lose this file. I wouldn't be able to switch to it unless I click on this little shield right here. This little shield makes something called a fake user and now this has a user in the file that isn't being used by any of the rigs. Just something to be aware of if you're working with multiple animation actions and you want to keep them around for later on. Okay, let's add one more action. I'm just going to select everything and zero it out. Now, as I zeroed it out, it did add a keyframe here, which is fine. And I'm just going to change my start and end to zero and 100. 
and this is going to be my idle animation. So I'll do a first frame here, and I'll just pick a fun idle pose. So I'll just probably drag him down, just make him a little bit more relaxed, and push out the foot here, and push out the foot here. I'll just counter that out. Just give him a little bit of a bend in the elbow, and a bit of a bend in the clavicle as well too. I usually activate the clavicle anytime I activate the arm. Um, usually I'll do that a little bit more than the actual shoulder control as I'm just playing around with this. Okay, so I'm liking the way that's working. Um, again, I'll just grab the hand controls and just rotate them on the Y app. I'll do the same thing with these four here. And I'll do the same on the sword over there too. I'm just going to fix that thumb before I go over. Now there are ways that I could have just copied this from the other animation pose. Uh, at this point, it's just quicker just to grab it over and copy it. It's looking cool. I don't like how far that arm is out. I'll just drag it down a little bit. It's just looking a little bit low energy there. And I probably won't activate the spine controls for this test. Um, I'd probably grab those later. If I pass it off to an animator, I'd have them activate them a little bit more. Okay, so that's looking good for frame zero. What I'm going to do first of all is copy that to frame 100. So for this idle animation, I just want a little bit of keep alive. So I could go to frame 50, and I could just pull the hips over, give it a little bit of rotation, add a little bit of a rotation in the spine, and maybe a little bit down on the clavicle as well too. Just something to keep the character alive when they're not walking in space in the um, game engine. So there's my two poses right there. And now it's a little slow. So over a hundred frames, it's like almost like a big breath. It's looking okay. Let's add another one at 25 though. So at frame 25, I'll just bring the spine a little bit the other way, drag the hips down, just drag these arms a little bit. I'm just adding very small changes to a bunch of controls just to get a little bit of movement in this character. So now I have this. Yep, and again, I'm watching this over here to sort of get an idea of how this is going to look. And I'll just do a little bit more on frame 77. Again, I'm just giving them slight changes through this just to give it a little bit of movement. Cool, that's looking nicer. What I'll probably do though is over here, I'm just going to see what's going to look like behind the character. So I'm going to lock the camera to view and just come back to here because this is what we're going to see most of the time. Now, something weird was happening there, and that's because I had my camera selected and I was actually keying it because I have auto key turned on. So now you see I have all these keys in my camera, so I'm just gonna select them and just delete them. And I'll just turn off auto key to reposition my camera. I'll play that again. Okay, it's looking a little bit too active. I actually wanna calm it down a little bit, and I'm actually gonna select everything and go to my graph editor for this. I'm not going to do this on my dope sheet and try to find those keys. I'm just going to find the big um, curves in my graph editor and just calm them down. So if I hit A to select everything, um, I have a couple of keys here that I just want to bring down. So this one here I notice is pretty big, so I'll just bring that down there. And that probably calms it down a little bit. Let's grab this one down a little bit too. And I'm just looking for big changes in my graph. Just ones that I want to bring down a little bit more towards the center line, just to have a nice smooth animation. Okay, that's looking a lot better right there. I don't want to play with this anymore. What I'll do is I'll flip back to my dope sheet and I'll rename this Night Idle. Again, I can click this little shield right here and now at any time I can flip from Night Idle to Night Walk. And I have my two actions connected to the file, which I can change to at any time. So that's just a quick animation test that I usually do on a rig. I could keep going with this and do a run cycle. I could keep working on that walk cycle. But in the next video, I'll show you how to bake this down to the deform rig and bring this into the game engine. We'll also talk about why I built the control rig, why it's useful, um, and other ways you could have done this without even building the control rig at all. Uh, you don't necessarily need the control rig. It's just something there that's to help with the process. It's a tool that you'll use to make things easier. Anyway, I'll get into that a bit more in the next video. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting me in this video, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.